This is a D6 Generation Pep, bite-sized content for a busy gamer. Sometimes featuring Craig, sometimes featuring Russ. Hey, what about me? Oh yeah, and sometimes featuring Rafe, ah, uh, Hollywood Granger. And welcome to another episode of the D6 Generation. This pip is a continuing saga of Rafe and my uh, reintroduction to War Machine. We're getting back yes. into it thanks to Mark Four, right, Rafe? Yep, yep. I'm feeling like these need to be like pips on two dice or something. Two dice pips. I feel like these are. I feel like yeah. <laughs> these are like the uh, you know in, in a casino playing craps. People always call it snake eyes. Is the two one you know the one and the one but it's really called the eyes. So sort of a pit. This is like the eyes, two dice the eyes. Okay. Well, the eyes are on war machine right now, Rafe. Uh, and uh, at least for us, um, we've been playing around with Mark four. Now, now last episode, we, we did an episode on the rules changes and what we thought about them before we even played a game. And then there was a companion lost chapter available to our patrons over on Patreon, in which we shared our thoughts about our very first game of war machine. Mark four. Yep. Uh, but now we thought we now we played a second game. So this this week we played another game. Uh, Rafe and I did, and we thought it might be fun. Now that we played two games to share on this particular episode, all of our thoughts on the game. Now that we played twice, uh, our excitement, a little more detail about that particular match, our excitement going into it, having played one game already. What did we change? Were we still excited? Why were we still excited? Um, and then there's also a companion lost chapter over on Patreon for this episode where we talk about some of the confusion that ensued as we were starting to try to figure our lists out over privateers go to market strategy with Mark four. Uh, so we talk about that a little bit and how privateers doing that. Um, and so if you want to hear that sort of behind the scenes conversation, that's over there on Patreon. Yeah. And I want to add not confusion in sort of a bad way, more like excitement over and confusion, but excitement on trying to understand what lists we can bring and what perhaps their market strategy was going to be. We, yeah, we were just, like where it was a more, you're right. It was more us trying to get, ex, getting excited and getting and second yes. guessing what their yes. clients will do. Yes. Yes. That's a better way to say it. Which sort of inspired us to try to reach out to privateers. So we might be able to have someone from private to press on soon. We hope so. Yeah. Um, but in any case, um, in the interim, um, we thought it'd be fun to share with all of you how our second game went. So mm -hmm. uh, Rafe, Talk to me about your 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 mental journey between game one and game two. And All right, I have a lot. What your thought press was? I can talk a lot about this. Bear, sit back. Okay. Go. Go. Game one, super enjoyed. Played Sorsha, Man of War armor, bunch of Men of War. I love the Men of War. Russ won by taking advantage of my ignorance and not touching two clouds together. He wouldn't have won. There's no way. I, so it was a good game. Had him against the ropes. He, Dude, you're he, way ahead, way ahead. On the way ahead, right? I was like, I remember how to play this game. I'm a brilliant commander. And in the second game, oh my God, you wiped the floor of my list. You dismantled it. You put it into tiny little pieces. You, I could see the glee in your eye. It, <laughs> it was a little glee. I'm not going to lie. It, it was a very, it was a very happy game for me because everything just it, worked on my side. That was part yes, of it. Yes. And it's, it's, it's a glee that's hard to deal with when you're receiving it and you weren't <laughs> rubbing it in, but all your little toys of your army, which I'll let you describe worked. And trust me, I've been on the receiving end of that when I'm like, Oh, watch this. And I, you know, throw a bombard in there or, you know, you know, throw something in, knocks him down and three bombards land on a unit, completely wipe the unit out. I've been on the dishing outside of that too, but yeah, you dismantled it. Okay. So the list. So the first list is what we call legacy list using the new Mach 4 rules. And it was super fun. We had Sorsha, we had Men of War, we had the Beast 09, and we had Mechanics. Right. Mm -hmm. Second list, I wanted to do the new models, if you would. And we did proxies. Right. So I did uh, Katarina, Capitan Katarina, something or other. She's one of the three Warcaster choices, and she's what I would call a denial caster. And uh, you know, her feet was a minus two speed. Minus, it cannot run, cannot slam trample, charge, sorry, not cannot run, can't uh, charge. And this was neat against Signar, minus four range, which I was excited about, okay, range attacks. 
And that, that kind of caster took, uh, I took a shooty Jack. I wanted to surprise Russ and go, ha I'm not going to take a melee Jack. I'm going to, I'm going to trick you, but I outfoxed myself. And so I created this, what I thought was this devastating, um, you know, almost like a 40 K dreadnought with just missile launchers and auto cannons and last cannons. And that's what I thought I took. And instead I took like a pea shooter and a, <laughs> a close range. Pop. Oh, he was pretty scary though. He was, he wasn't, no. like, he wasn't a Kate softy. I don't think no, so. he was, he, I built him as a doofus would build him. Okay. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about the rules. <laughs> well, this is the thing I, you can build your own jacks now. So it's not like that Jack is necessarily the problem. There's no. particular things Ray put together in conjunction with his mission objectives and other stuff that began. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's get into that. The rules. So, yeah. Misread the I misread the cannon. I thought it was my 14-inch bombard cannon. It's not. It was a six-inch shield cannon. So just totally mind blanked over that. And then the long-range gun, I'd only rate of fire one. And I, for some dumb reason, just thought it was rate of fire two. So it only had one, and you can't spend focus to shoot other shots. So it basically had no shot all game and one shot. shot once. I think it killed one times. dude. Oh yeah! Finally, we, we, we blew away one of my one of my uh, storm knights. Yeah, you enca- you engaged it with your jack, and again, I was so mad I didn't take the buzz saw that I could have. But anyway, and then I took winter guard. They were cool, and uh, with an upgrade of a rocket launcher with a, um, a cannon auto cannon guy in there, and then I took snipers with a dog. And the dog, the dog with the snipers made the snipers really cool. Gave them reposition. Gave them a plus five bonus uh, if. In close to the enemy, which I also misread. Okay. Um, so the dog gives plus two um, attack bonuses. If the dog is five inches close to the enemy, I misread that. And I thought my models just needed to be within five inches of the dog. So again, I kind of misdeployed that. So that's the deployment. I'll let you describe the. Uh, yeah, I wanted to add one little thing in your list there. So you, um, one of the things that was really interesting to me as we were comparing lists with our whiskey when before we played uh rafe and i went through all of our models because we were using stand-in models right um for both sides and so we wanted to make sure everybody was clear what we had the good news is both of us were fully painted with our stand-ins and i think both both of us uh, um, did a pretty good job of trying to pick things that looked very similar to the new models in many cases they're almost identical um because the new models were inspired by the old ones in many cases so so they were very very close um yes so one one of the things that was interesting about the dog that I thought was fascinating that sort of um, with the new rules. So as you mentioned in the rule thing, you're the way units work now is you pick any model in the unit and you move the one model. And then the rest of the models are just placed within two inches of the model that moved. And what's interesting about that is the dog is faster than the rest of the models in the unit. So if you always pick to move the dog first, he effectively makes the entire unit faster, which Mm -hmm. is interesting and my in my head, the fluff is like, well, the dog's scouting the terrain and you know, figuring it out. But it's just sort of neat. It's just a cool concept that was something that isn't immediately obvious until you put it all together in your head. So that was pretty neat. Yep. 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 Oh, and I had a mortar in there too. Yeah. So um one of the things, um, so for my list, same thing. I really wanted to play the other signar list that's currently available, which is really the the Storm Legion, which is part of Prime. Um, and so I, I, and I've always wanted an excuse to paint up my striker three, which is the huge mounted cavalry striker model. That is just awesome. Um, I was telling Rafe, I kind of view him as like the pinnacle of what privateer was able to do with, with metal and spin casting. And, um, so I, I, I had him for a while. He's been sitting in a box in his original box unopened for, I don't know how long. So I broke him out because the, one of the casters in, uh, the storm legion list, it happens to be female, but she's mounted on a horse in electric armor, and she's got abilities very similar to Striker, and she's got rackable spells, which include all the spells that were trademark Striker spells. So I could I could get a pretty cool sort of Striker feel with her. So I just swapped Striker out for her and used it as an excuse to pretty much paint him up. So he was almost done. I got to finish the banner, but I would say he is done. Like if you put him on a table, people would say he's done. I get it. You want to do more, but there's a little more detail work to do. But I was happy with how he came out. It was a blast oh, he's, together. It was awesome. He was, he's a great mob. So got him done. And then the rest of my stuff was pretty much one for one substitutions. The, um, the storm guard I used a unit of storm guard, which are the, uh, the guys in the storm arm, they each have a halberd, right. Uh, and there's just five of them. Now there's no leader. There's a banner you can get. And this is another interesting thing too. I figured out Rafe. So like what they've done is I didn't catch this. I looked at it in more detail. So there is a storm Knight standard bearer now, 
but he can be attached to any Storm Knight unit, whether they're the guard or the blades, right? So that's kind of interesting. And he can he can help either unit out now. So you just at the start of the game, you got to or the list building, got to assign them. But that's sort of neat, right? So they have yeah. these cross unit attachments now, which is sort of interesting. Mm-hmm. Maybe they always had that in weird cases, but that seems kind of new to me. Um, so I have one unit of Storm Guard, no attachments. Then I had my Striker Warcaster. Um, then I had um, two jacks. So uh, the configurable jacks for Signar, there's a medium and a large uh, in the Storm. And both of them are pretty close to existing jacks. So one of them had an arm that's a hammer and an arm that's a power fist. So of course I made him an ironclad and even had the tremor special rule with his with his power, with his hammer. So it was very ironclad-y. Um, for his head, I think I took the one that gave him immune electricity just so he'd fit in, but there was another one that gave him follow-up. So he made him really pretty ironclad-ish. And then the medium jack, you could give him a spear, you could give him a shield, and you give him a head that was an arc node and basically make him a lancer. I mean, he's literally a lancer. And his shield even had the thing where if you banged him, it would take off a cortex point. So he was exactly a lancer. So I used the lancer model. So it was easy to remember what those things were. I was excited about those. I was a little nervous. So I also picked um, some cards. So I was one point short. So I had to pick one of the command cards that was worth a point. And one of the command cards that was worth a point was, um, I forget what it's called, but it gives you additional plus five range to your war cast. Oh, dang it. You had to it. pay a point for that? I had to pay a point for that. That's what like, got me. I feel like that could be useful. Um, and so, but at the, the you're going to laugh at this, right? When I first picked my spell list, I didn't really have any range spells for my caster. So you know what? I'll just take Chain Lightning instead as a rackable spell. It's not really a striker spell, but it's on there. And that way the extended range might work out, but Ray's probably got men of war or something. It's not going to hurt him, but I'm just going to take that spell. So at least the extended range will do something because it was the coolest one point card there, I thought. And then yeah. um, I also picked sort of some standard command cards that are sort of like go-tos at this point. One of them is the one that heals your jack, which is huge. Um, these are all one use things, right? So I had that one. I had the one that lets you move out of hand-to-hand combat without a penalty, which is handy too. But those are the big one was the extended range one, which we'll talk about later. Um, now one other thing we did was there's yeah. literally updates happening every day, Rafe. Like I just opened up the app and another update came out and just added battle engines, which I'm super excited about. So oh, Rafe and I had sick. a battle engine on the table as a terrain piece just for just for looks. So if you see the picture of it floating around the internet, because I put some pictures up, that's terrain. Now- like we that. both paid. We we wanted to. I want to support Privateer Press. Yeah, and, yeah. And, right. You know, I, I was like, I don't need to store it in the cloud, but I want to be able to store it in the cloud. Will Will everybody get the battle engine? Because that's a rule change. I think it's just adding to the lists. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. I right now I think the line is if you pay like the mission we played, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. That was only available to subscribers. So okay. some mission. of the mission and there's a campaign mode now that's out there already on the app. Also only available to subscribers, I think. But and fluff. The fluff, yeah. I think I don't know about the fluff, but there is faction specific fluff. Uh, okay. I don't know if that's only for and I know cloud-based storage you get for paying. Right. Um of your list. So yeah, the cloud-based storage is, is a thing, but um so um I'm just trying to see if the battle engines are here because I saw them come up. But anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, um I'm all excited about that. Well, while you talk about that, I, I see I a structure add- in there. I want to add a couple of things that you said um, yeah, you go. to that. So, well, I can't remember. Well, Russ was going to talk about, so there's this new mission. Oh, the mission and, we want to talk about. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, Describe and the mission, Rafe. The new mission is, it was kind of neat, is very cinematic where you have a messenger. You're going to pick a trooper model or maybe a warrior model, and you're going to, and you're going to um, go to these data points. And you want to picture the data points as there's three little sides of a nickel is what we used. Um, throughout the middle part of the board and then eight inches on Russ's side of the board are three in line and then eight inches on my side of the board are three in line and I pick one in his zone that's the final data point and all the other ones are just out there and so I can kind of run to this data point and I get a VP and then I can run I don't have to run but you get to a second data point and you and you sit on it you get two VPs and then when you get the last data point you get three VPs. Yep. And there are multiple, multiple, this, this particular mission had multiple wind conditions, which was really cool. I'll let Russ break into that. But um, what I wanted to go back was the deployment. I know he's going to zap lightning. Like, I know he's picking Stormguard because he just won't shut up about it. That is the thing Stormguard does. That's Storm, right. Storm So I know I'm going to be zapped with lightning all over. But even though I know that, 
I decide to group all my trooper models, not the armored models, all the trooper, the Winter Corps, formerly known as Winter Guard, and the snipers, known as something else. And I put them on this little pedestal that's think of it as like a CD that you put into a thing. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm grouping them up, but this is the first move of the game. And I'm like, I know he's got an arc node and and <laughs> and that's all fine, but he can't get me. Okay. Oh, yeah. And oh, and I'm in concealment, plus I'm on yeah. elevated terrain. Oh, yeah, you're totally safe. Go totally on. safe. Now, it wasn't your niggling little spell that got me. Everybody listening to this, remember, <laughs> your opponent... Rafe's gets not to, bitter, but he's been focusing on this. <laughs> your opponent gets to run plus five. Yeah, right. Okay? Now, because what was the Lancer's speed? Five? Oh, he's pretty fast anyway, though. I think the it's Lancer is seven, actually... right? I think he's speed six normally. Okay, so actually, I guess I still did the math wrong because you would have been the old rules been able to run twelve, but um, you ran eleven. But yeah. what? I, so yeah, he's speed six. Uh, ironically, both the jacks in the storm legion list, the heavy, the biggest one and the medium one, are both speed six, which is pretty fast for a heavy jack. So at least it used to be. Um, and maybe yeah. they tweaked that because running is shorter now. I mean, running is. It's, it's always plus five. It's not always shorter, but it's always plus five now. It's so. a big deal for me being used yeah. to having uh, movement four models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you want to go right to that scene or do you want to go to the mission rules first? You want to, is that like a teaser or should I talk about that scene right now? You, you can, can talk, talk about, about it. it. Okay. So, the so, so the mission, well, the we'll, we'll talk about the mission because it explains the scene. So you weren't, right. you're, you're kind of throwing yourself under the bus here saying like you did a stupid thing, but it wasn't that stupid because you, so here's the thing. This mission was one of the more interesting. So anyway, to get to this mission, uh, as I was mentioning, when you subscribe, they give you extra content in the library section of the app. And one of these things is a section of of new, there's the campaign rules, which are one thing, but then there's also this new section of a play method, a play style, I guess. And in there is the first new mission in this play style. And this play style is really interesting because it brings a lot of interesting things to the table. And it's in this section called um, uh, the Battle Forge. So this is Battle Forge, it's a play style called Battle Forge. So it's kind of like um, Steamroller is a competitive event. I think Battle Forge is just sort of you play with your friends, but it's a it's a format of play. And it's got its own section of rules about um, how all this stuff works. It's very similar to Steamroller in that there's like certain generic rules that are always the same. Like it goes through all the different kinds of terrain standards that should be there. But the first mission has very specific terrain lets, which is interesting. But most War Machine missions kind of evolved to, uh, in the past, were sort of like, there's rectangular areas and there's circular areas and you try to control those, right? Sort and of like flags, all sort of king of the hill. Right? Flags, and, yeah. This one though was messengers where each side had to pick one model and it was known. One model in your army had to be a trooper or a solo and a trooper is any model in a unit, right? And a solo is any model that's not a trooper. Um, that's not already a war caster or a war, 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 war beast or something. So um, you had to pick one of those. And then on the table, was a grid of essentially nine objective points that are the three of them are along the center line of the table and three of them are eight inches closer to my side and three of them are eight or inches closer to Rafe's side, equidistant around. So think of it like an equidistant set of dots. And what you have to do is you secretly record one of the dots that's closest to your opponent and you got to get to that specific dot with your messenger. But before you get to that one, you got to check in at any of the other two dots, one per row, right? And this is the messenger going and getting intel to figure out where he's got to go to bring his message, right? So you can pick any of the first row dots to check in at, and then you can pick any of the second row dots to check in at, and then you can pick any of the third row dots to check in at. And then once you check, not no, I'm sorry, you can't. You got to pick the one you wrote down for the third row. And then once you get that one, you try to get your messenger off the opponent's side of the table, right? And what's interesting was you get one victory point for the first check-in, two victory points for the second, and three for the third. And then if you get off the table, you instant win, which is interesting. Um, we don't instantly at the end of the turn. So what's interesting about these break, uh, this 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 uh, play style is it has a nice clear victory check that occurs at the end of each turn. And one of them is, you know, did you get your guy off the end of the table? And then it was, um, is anybody leading by five victory points or more? Then the instant they went at the end of that turn also. And then are you the guy with the only leader left? So it's interesting in this format, you don't instant kill, at least the way I read, you don't instant kill when you kill their caster at the moment. But at the end of the second player's second turn, any time, if you're the only guy with a leader, you win. So you actually have a chance to, and because of the order of, of checking for victory, theoretically, I could lose my caster in the turn that I got my messenger off the table and I would still win. 
right? Because at the end of the turn, you check the guy getting off the table first, which I thought was really interesting. So there's a lot of interesting nuances here. So anyway, so now we're playing yeah. the game and Rafe's got one of these objectives on this hill thing. And so he runs, but he, he wants to get his widow makers on the hill, I presume, but he yeah. also wants to get his little messenger guides on the hill to check in. Yeah. And so that's how you ended up with them all bunched together. Correct. Right. And, and I was all excited to launch the rocket at you because he's a jack hunter. And yeah, right. I was like, ha ha, I'm going to kill the Lancer. And, you know, I was all excited. I thought I was going to range you first, but you outranged me. You went bold. Well, so this is what I saw. So I'm looking at this and my Lancer now is behind my hill, which is opposite Rafe's hill. And, and then, again, the table is pre-set up on this mission layer. Well, even, even the terrain placement, which is sort of interesting too, which gets you excited about using your terrain and things, uh, which is fun. So uh, I'm thinking, well, Here's what Rafe set me up. So he's got all these guys in the hill. Now, normally the models all have to be within two inches of the guy that last moved. So you shouldn't beat yourself up too bad. There's really no way you could have set yourself up so that chain lightning wouldn't really mess up one unit. What you did do though, by putting two different units so close together, and literally he's got base to base models from the Winter Guard with the Widowmakers. Now the chain lightning is going to arc all over the place. So right. I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay. He's got really good defenses. He's on the hill. That's bad. But and, could, and and you're what twenty four inches away at this. And I'm point like really time, far or, away. I'm like twenty two. Or I mean, he, when I this is first turn, so he's yeah, in yes. his deployment zone. I'm in my deployment zone now. My deployment zone, classic war machine, one of the few miniature games that does this. The second player's deployment zone is larger than the first player's deployment zone. Player one deployment zone seven. Player two deployment zone is ten. So that player one doesn't get a huge advantage. I love that war machine does this. Not a lot of games do this. I think it's pretty brilliant. Yeah, so. So Rafe has moved. He's out there. It's my turn one. I think you're I'm, miles away. I look like I'm miles away. Now I'm looking at Rafe's situation. He's got the spells up. He's given him some kind of like concealment. They're on a hill. And in War Machine Mark IV brought back that if your target's on a hill, they got plus two defense. So I'm like, crap, that's going to be a hard shot. But I'm looking at this and I'm like, that is chain lightning bait. My caster has seven focus. Chain lightning is a three focus spell. And how it works is when you hit somebody with it, they take a POW 10 hit, and then it arcs D3 times to the next closest models and hits them for POW 10. And these are all pretty weedy dudes. Now, their defense is super high, but you only got a defense hit once and the lightning starts arcing everywhere. So I just got to get the hit. And because I have seven focus, I can cast a spell twice, right? But I had to get some other, but I wanted to build a boost to hit on both casts because there. So I had a card that gives me a bonus. Point of focus, arcane surge. So I played that. You can play two cards in a turn. So I so here's a bunch of new War Machine Mark IV rules. First of all, we got these command cards, right? You pick them at the start of the but, but when you build your army. So I had the one that gives me a boost. That's like a no brainer card. You got to take that thing. So I took that. Now I've got eight focus, right? So I can cast yeah. my spell twice, and I got a boost for each one. The jacks in Mark IV, like Mark III, they power up in the control phase, right? So my jacks already have a focus on them each without coming pulling from the caster. I don't put any extra focus on the jacks. Now I can pull the focus off the Lancer, who's an arc node, and run him. And now he's speed six. He runs 11. So he runs up on the hill in front of him. And now he's looking down. And like Rafe said, we're about 20 inches apart, 22 inches apart. His his lead would have maker was about exactly 20 inches apart because my right. jack, just by running, was it within got in the, the tip of the toe. Just but barely. You, but you so did the spells it. range 10. So right. I can already arc to that guy. But he's, but that, she actually, the Widowmaker, she's kind of on the lead of the squad and does not have a lot of juicy stuff. And plus Rafe's messenger is in the, the winter guard behind her. So, so I see you do it. I get nervous, but I'm like, eh, 10 That's just the Widowmakers. They got good. But then I play my other card, which is plus five range that for hurts. the rest of the spellcaster's turn. So that means both casts of the spell are going to be plus five range, which is huge. So I'm set up to cast twice. So now I pick the actual messenger guy I'm going to hit because now I'm ranging him. So I can kill the messenger. Now, if you kill the messenger, what happens is the guy doesn't auto lose. What happens is, though, you got to pick a new messenger and that guy's got to go recheck in at the last checkpoint. Yep. So Rafe already got a victory point checked in in turn one, which is awesome. But now he's got to he's going to have to waste a turn not advancing his messenger unit because they're going to have to, if I can kill this guy, assuming I wipe the whole unit out. So here's my plan. So, and by the way, if I can somehow wipe out both these units, then Rafe is out of troopers. So then he's going to have to beat me on caster kill or something because he's not going to have any messenger anymore. So this would be a huge thing if I could get both these casts off. So I get it. I boost the first shot. I roll. I roll like two twos and a one or a three or something. It was a bad roll and miss. So it's a miss. 
So I've done all this. I spent all the cards. I did all like, no, miss. Well, fortunately, I set myself up to cast twice. So in my head, this was going to be a devastating situation, but at least it was a good backup to mitigate the luck. So then I rolled again, boosted, and this one hits, right? And it kills the messenger, which buys me the time. And it arcs, I think, twice, right? Max, you got max. I got got three arcs, right? So I killed, I think, another, I killed a Widowmaker. Four dudes. Yeah, four dudes die because the initial dude plus three, right? So like, whack. Uh, How did that make you feel, Rafe? That was painful. (laughs) That was was, super. It was glorious for my side because everything worked. I mean, if I could have shot it twice, I would have actually felt bad. Getting the only one hit made me feel like I did good luck mitigation (laughs) on my side. Um, it was good. Now, it was a good. It was a good move. And being a Kador player, which I think favors the bold, um, not KG. And I was playing this list KG. I like seeing Signar go bold because Signar can also bring it when they go bold. Like well, they striker, striker two and striker three, which which was fun about doing this is striker two. And, I never played with striker three. I don't know what his actual rules are. I mean, I do his cards. I've marked three cards somewhere, but but um. Striker two, remember, was very bold. Striker two is the guy in the armor that, like, he rolls three dice and does that much more strength, but then he can kill himself. Like, yeah, Striker yeah. three is like a, <clears throat> like a melee caster. So, so stri- this one's fun because it made the army very, it felt very like aggressive, and so I was able to. But that changed the whole tone of the game because it stalled you for a turn. Yep. And my on the right flank, my storm knights, uh, storm guard advanced to their objective. They had the messenger in their unit. They got the first check in. And they were now positioned to keep moving forward. And it put the pressure on you um, because what I started to do is push the center forward of my jacks and my caster. And so now you've got a tough decision because your infantry has got to kind of pause while they go recheck in with the messenger. Yep. And you could go after my messengers, but if you do that, you're going to make the center get all soft and squishy against my two jacks. So now you got a tougher situation. So, well, uh, I'm still feeling a little okay. Okay. Because I'm, I'm like, it dawns on me as you shoot my messenger and you say, Oh, if I kill all your messengers, you can't like you have to do a different win condition. But I'm like, uh uh-huh, I've got you know 10 people basically to be messed. You, you had a lot more than I did. I only had five. You only had five and they couldn't shoot. That's so right. they had no range attack. Here's a plug for why I should buy the battle box right now, or why you don't want to use stand-ins. <laughs> as of the jack I used to be the stand-in is the behemoth. And on the behemoth right. are right. two big cannons on their shoulders that used to shoot 14 inches. So I'm like, this is going to be great. I'm going to drop a mortar on those dudes. I'm going to kill a couple. I'm going to drop some bombards on those dudes, kill a couple. My cannon is rat fire too, which it wasn't. Kill a couple. I should be able to wipe out his whole squad, and maybe I've got a fighting chance. But then when it got to that part of the game for me, I didn't get the luck you had. I have a spell, I can't remember the name of it, but I call it Half of Signs Importance. I'm used to playing Kador with a spell called Signs Importance where you roll Three dice drop the lowest for both attack and damage. The new spell is you roll three dice and drop the lowest. Usually you hit. (laughs) No, the mortar, it happens. I roll two, one, one. You know, when you see that, you know that's a miss. And then I look at the cannon, and because it's not a shield cannon, because I don't have the right model repped, I forget, and I'm like, yeah. crap, six inches. Yeah, because if you saw a shield cannon, you'd know it was a range for right. If he was wearing you a shield like cannon, a I would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. because of rep problems, yeah. I couldn't bombard them. And then I only had one shot, which did kill a dude. I uh, killed a guy, but the way I was set up, you only really had range to the non-messenger guy. So you just wiped out one of the guys in the Well, area. yeah, that's. but my point was to wipe them all out. Or my That was my plan right, right, after right. you electrified me. So once I saw that there's no way you're sitting on the objective turn two, I'm like, oh, this game's over. I've got, you know, me, and, and you kept your caster away, you know, so. Uh, so uh, let me say what I did like about the mission, though. It was very narrative. I like that we weren't just fighting over a square or right. a circle. So it was very narrative. I also liked, I appreciated the fact that when your trooper got to the data point, he got it. It wasn't that whole got a whole turn thing, which is. Right. I like Makes that. sense with fluff, right? Oh, they got to hack the data point. But it was so nice to just run them up. Boop, he gets it. Like, yeah. I just love that. Um, yeah. So well, one thing we talked about, and and this was on um, both of us, because what, what happened was the mission sort of dropped into our phones between our last play and we decided to play again. And we were already working on our list. And so the mission just sort of showed up. And I'm like, hey, what, you want to try this? Let's just look on our phones and pick a mission. And this just dropped. Hey, you want to try this mission? And thinking about it, though, 
Rafe and I both, I, I comment to Rafe, like, next time we should tell each other the mission, decide on the mission first. Because I think, I don't know if you're always intended to build a list towards the mission. You kind of are because the missions will say this is a 50 point, you know, mission or a 30 point mission. By the way, so, we played at 30 points. We did play 30 points. This one was both. But some of the missions in the campaign, because I want to play the campaign with you too, but that starts at 50 points. So minimally, you should read the mission first. And so I think players should have knowledge of the mission in advance is what I'm saying, especially in a yeah. casual game, which would have been important because in this mission, you could imagine yourself coming to the coming to the game with very few troopers and you'd be at a very big disadvantage, right? Or very few yeah. solos. Yeah. So you definitely want it. Now, 50 points, you'd almost certainly have some. But you, um, it, I think it'd be fun to play this mission again, both of us in advance knowing the mission and crafting lists that are like, which makes sense, right? Because your army might be like, we got to get a messenger through. So the, dispatch the right units yeah. to take care of the job. It'd be kind of fun. I think it'd be fun to try. I, I, would, I would definitely do that again. Yeah. Yep. So, so right. that's so that's kind of my overview. So it was it was frustrating, but not due to the fact that the game was imbalanced or broken or didn't give me the choices. It was more like I picked a list. I didn't really know what I was doing. It was a mission. I didn't really know what I was doing. It was a warcaster that I'd never played before. So it was one of those. Deals. Yeah. But it and made I, me at the end, I was doing that list swapping thing where I'm like, oh, I'll forget this Warcaster. I don't like denial of Warcasters, you know, which is not true because I like them when I play Circle. So, yeah. And maybe I just got lucky because um, I think I got it, the list I picked happened to match the synergies I like. And the caster yeah. really was pretty close to a striker type caster. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the Storm Guards still worked the way they would have, which in this case, now they're cool. They're, What's interesting about them is they're they have um they have this ability called I think it's called anti jack or jack killers or something so they get extra dice against jacks so they um they Jackson. gave me some confidence to go forward there but one of the things that was also nice was that with rackable spells because I was picking things that I that were the same spells spiker striker used to have um they had the he, she had the ability or he had the ability to cast the spells that were like um increase armor or increase defense. Um, which was huge because then I could get those the infantry models. And that first time I was kind of hanging out there because I did the double lightning thing. But once that was over, I could pull back and only cast lightning once a turn. And then I could go ahead and protect that squad, which ended up being a big deal because I think it actually saved a couple of dudes. Yeah, it saved a couple. So it, the, the list matched my play style more. So I think that definitely worked out for me. Um, but Rafe, like, so after two games now, I want to ask you something about the rules in general. But after two games... What's your feeling on Mark Four? You still enjoying it? Are you excited to play yep. more? Yeah, I'm mean, excited what, to play more. What are you liking still, about it? What do you, what's bothering you? Still like all the rule changes. Um, nothing's bothering me. Even them, I was forget my rating on command cards, but they were less paint. My first game, I was like, I don't like them. They they well, command them. cards were coconut pie. Okay, so that was the lowest of the low. I mean, you were thinking command cards uh, were definitely going to slow the game down and not make it as fun. Yeah, now I think they're apple pie, which is medium, or um, strawberry rhubarb even. Ooh, because, they're, they're they're progressing up. Now, yeah. why do you think they're better now? Well, it was fun. And I was me. the guy that was able to use the command cards yep. arguably more effectively that game. Than yeah, even when I didn't know. Right. It was there. You know, I didn't read all your cards. Um, it was fun when I was building my list to know, like, oh, if my jack gets gummed up, I can break through, get away. Yeah. Uh, if I'm a little focused starved, I've got an extra focus. Um, if I need Pathfinder, I've got it up my sleeve. So it actually made list building a little more freeing. So that was cool. I think that's right. And the other thing too is they are there are one and two points command cards, which are yes. nice when your list is just shy of the point goal. You can kind of use it as a filler. Which yeah, I, I like that too. Yep. So I like and that. It turned out to be a big deal for me. That particular game, it was a dream moment. Yep. Um, over... It'll live forever in my memory, Rafe. It's a, it's a, it's <laughs> oh, a yeah. That's going to be... Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna have that highlight reel. Remember all those guys time. dying from lightning on the hill? Yeah, that, yeah, that was, that was a good day. Definitely. <laughs> um, it really stunk too because it was a very snowy day. You drove up on a blizzard, and I was, uh, was like, "Oh, Kador, winter blizzard." It winter, was all. Sun. It was all you, man. It was all you. All the signs were there, but signs of importance wouldn't. Well, the new version of signs of importance wouldn't work. Couldn't get hits. Uh, I was aggravated. Um, so yeah, I liked the movement. I liked. I liked all of it. It was great. Oh, and, and building jacks was fun. You know, yeah. popping on this head, popping in that head, popping in this arm. What if I use that arm? Okay, wait. So you said that Jack customization was apple pie last time. So middle. Mm -hmm. Is it still apple pie or is it advanced to rhubarb? No, I'd say it's advanced to rhubarb. Strawberry rhubarb. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Because you can now tweak it. 
Now, I will say one of the list critiques I would have for you, and I think this is generally true of War Machine, uh, and I think it's still true in Mark IV. So one of the biggest differences between our two lists, I had one unit of infantry, you had two units of infantry, which is great. I had two jacks, you had one jack. I think in smaller point value games, and 30 points is as small as they get, taking one uber jack is not always as effective as two maybe lesser jacks. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's true. And Kador struggles with that because we don't have light jacks. Um, right, right. There, you know, there's almost a light jack in the old rule, which was the Berserker, but still it was way more points than a typical light jack. Yes. You can't yeah. take a Berserker as of yet. Yeah. But what satisfies the role of a light jack for Kador is the shock troop of some variant. Yeah, and right. I didn't have that. Yeah, the Men of War, definitely that, because they are they got multiple wounds. They have... Uh, well, your gun was kind of that. Your gun, your um, your mortar had multiple wounds too. That thing was hard to kill. Yeah, he had multiple wounds, which was cool too. Yeah. So, cool. yep. So yeah, it. Uh, yep. Yeah, but uh, yeah, command cards uh, moved up, and multiple jack options moved up too. Oh, and I didn't realize this until I read one of the articles that Matt Wilson himself actually wrote, which is a good article. Um, the new list. So okay, so I'm going to use some terminology. Prime. I'm going to call the new lists that you can build prime. Where that's coming from is you click Prime in the app, and then it says Mach 4 of Legacy. I'm not going to use the term Mach 4 because that gets confusing to me. There's (laughs) Prime lists and there's Legacy lists. Correct. And in the Prime list, he said on purpose, you get three Warcasters and you get two Jacks. Everybody. Yep. I didn't realize that. I thought it was, oh, they just haven't updated it yet or something Mm -hmm. like that. So I like now knowing that that's a design choice. I think that's pretty cool. And I can't wait to talk to Matt about this. Uh, I hope we can get him on because I think. Um, one of the things we talk about a little more in the, in the Patreon side of things, but, um, I was reading too, that they've really figured out the SKUs and we'll talk to Matt more about this, but like, there's, there's always going to be like a big army deal. And then there's going to be basically like two, uh, uh, two unique casters. You can also get instead as single boxes and then like two or three alternate sculpts. That's it. And it's always the same, but you're right. But then what they're going to do is they're going to release a bunch of these sub armies, right? So there might eventually be 10 different Signar Jacks. It's just that they're in five different lists, right? So and you won't be able to mix and match. when Unless you play Unlimited. That's that's right. where Unlimited comes in. Unlimited lets you mix and match. And by the way, the battle engines we mentioned coming out, I just found them. They're only in Unlimited right now. Oh, the battle engines are not in Prime or Legacy. They're only in Unlimited. Um, and Unlimited is, so is built as fun to play your old classic stuff, but not necessarily balanced. Unlimited, yeah. I want to ask you when I, I know we're bumping up against time. Do you right. feel the legacy list mm-hmm. is is powerly competitive against a prime list? Have yes. you played both? Yes. I think so. It when you in the app, you click prime, and then you're right, it shows you mark four or legacy. I think the armies you find in either mark four or legacy are equally powerful. They're just one of them is focusing on the old models, and the other one is focusing only on the new kits. And we should so, say the old models have new prime stats. Yes, yes, yes. So you can use your own model, old models, but they're the new prime stats. I don't know if they're going to keep printing the old models. I assume they will, but who knows? Um, but the new stuff is only, but probably not because it's called legacy. That's probably why it's called legacy. So, um, but I think they're equal. So in other words, I didn't feel more or less powerful this week than I did last week. That's what I was wondering because I felt like you, my list you so felt you probably felt less powerful than you did. I felt I way less powerful. I think your that, social list would have done better against the list I brought yeah. today than the current. But I don't think it'd be a fair comparison because I just think I you know when you switch from totally different types yeah. of casters, it changes everything. Well, I, you've never been an infantry caster. I think that's your. Uh, it's never been your jam. You know, no, Sorsha Sorsha used to be an infantry caster. Oh, I guess no, I guess that's right. Oh, yeah, because yeah. she would run up, do that feet, freeze everybody. Oh, and yeah, bombards on everybody's head. Yep. <laughs> All right, so so we're liking the game so far. We're going to play some more, but I did want a really quick rundown in our last few minutes here. I'm going to run through all the rules changes again. I'm not going to re-describe them because they're already. We just, but I want you to just tell me if it changed in your opinion. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. So we said the removal of facing. You were a strawberry rhubarb huge fan of that. Still correct. Okay, no free strikes. You said it was medium apple pie. Uh, that means that if you leave, you give up your combat action, not you don't get free strikes. How do you feel about that still? Uh, I would upgrade it now. Well, it's apple pie. I don't care either way. Still like, medi- mediocre. Okay. I like both. Uh, being able to shoot ranged guns when you're engaged, but you have to shoot the guy you're fighting. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that's cool. 
you were a huge fan before. So you were a uh, strawberry rhubarb on that one. Um, all right. The new AOE rules, the way they work now compared to old, you were strawberry rhubarb. You felt Still. that was good. Yeah, I love I, I love awesome. the cleanliness, the no dice. Oh, the it's no so point, much cleaner. No drifting. It's less fiddly for you, the defender, too, to be overly worried about yeah. it. You just know how it works, right? It's so yeah. much easier. Speeds up movement. Yeah. We said the plus five for running. Still strawberry rhubarb? Yep. Strawberry rhubarb. I think so, too. Uh, uh, Jackson Beast being called cohort models. Uh, we said. Wish there was a better name, but fine. Middling. We said apple pie. I don't really matter. Yeah. Uh, Oh, we haven't done it this much, but rough terrain being just minus two inches overall instead of having your movement. Uh, Apple pie. We said, we said coconut cream pie on that before. Yeah, coconut cream. I don't. Oh, we haven't even tried it yet. Uh, uh, okay, you can you can move it up. I think it's coconut cream still. We have to wait and see. We yeah, tried. I think it's coconut cream. Man. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, ooh, elevation being back. You like that. You uh, said coconut cream pie. You disliked it. And then you used yeah. it against me. I, no, I didn't because you were on a hill too. Yeah. So well, it mattered later when I went down the hill, though. Yeah, I guess a little bit. Yeah, uh, let's give it apple pie. You gonna go to apple? All right, all right. Can move it up. Uh, simplified power attacks. I don't think we've used power attacks yet. Nope. No, no. So uh, we no gotta comment. play some bigger games. Uh, you can only attack enemies. We said strawberry rhubarb. On yeah, yeah, I like that. I don't think that's changed. Command cards, though, that's the big one. So you said coconut cream pie, and now you're saying they've gone all the way to strawberry rhubarb. All the way to strawberry rhubarb. They went up to two whole pie ratings. All right. Now here's an interesting one. How are you feeling about the new sub codexes? Cause that kind of folds into the whole mm. legacy versus prime thing. You were a huge strawberry rhubarb fan of this. How are you feeling now? Yeah. I still like strawberry rhubarb. I like the constraints. It's All fun. Right. And did you do rackable spells? Cause you said yes. rackable spells were only apple pie. What do you feel about now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. I'm going to give rackable spells, strawberry rhubarb. Wow. There's a lot of upgrades here. Nothing's gone down. And then finally execution mode. We said apple pie, which would be it. They don't care about that one. We didn't really, yeah, we didn't right. really ferret that out. There you have it. So we're still enjoying War Machine. Now, here's the question, Rafe. Uh, I pulled the trigger and I ordered the Storm Legion Army deal. Yep. I found it on Amazon at a really good price, so I, I had to do it. Here's uh, here's my hesitation. I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's not the price. It's not the value for the price. It's not that I have to get new models. It's none of that. I probably won't play at any conventions. I, I get angsty thinking that there's a box like i still got the civil war army that i bought that i'll play craig with it hasn't been painted don't do well with box sets they like daunt me and then i don't paint them and now there's gonna be all, all these troopers that i have at least in russ and rafe games that can be the new troopers all painted so i'm like eh, i don't want half a box that i might never paint mm. so that's where i'm at all right yeah i'm i'm a the problem is I really like, well, now I'm really curious and we'll talk more of this in the future. I'm really curious about the, the quality of the models because they're all 3D printed now. So the new technology, right? For privateer. So I'm really curious about that. They look good in the pictures. I'm really curious about how they, the resin quality itself and how they feel. Uh, I'm really curious. They look, they look much more detailed. They look cool. They look super I'm cool. I'm curious about how they assemble. Um, I also found out the, the army box comes with a magnet set. So you can yep. put the mag with I heard the that. So I, I really want to try that too, because I want to try building the jacks and flipping the arms out. I think that'd be fun. And flipping the heads so, out. Yeah. So I'm ah, they suckered me in. Uh I I I did it. I pulled the trigger. So we're gonna see. But I I, I got a really good deal on Amazon. So I felt like um even if even if I don't paint everything, I'm still getting a just a jit cast. And what's also holding me back was I didn't love the new caster right away. Ah, so it's making me, you know, so I'm going to buy Sorsha in, in the Man of War armor. That's done. Yeah. And I'm going to paint that up. Now I got to paint one model, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's see if I even get that far. And let's see if I just keep enjoying Legacy. All right. So that's also holding me back. It wasn't like I loved the new. Well, I think next time we got to play a 50 point game. And if you go get Sorsha and Painter, that means you'll probably have Sorsha fighting Storm Legion, which would be prime fighting Legacy. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. I like it. All right, folks. Well, don't miss. Uh, our our companion content for this, where we start talking about our thoughts on the go-to-market strategy and how all these lists are supposed to work and where yep. Privateer Press is going, all this. Check it out on Patreon. To do that, go to patreon.com slash the D6Generation or just go to the D6Generation.com, click the Patreon link. You can jump in there, become a patron. You can get into our Discord server. You can help support the show and you get extra content like the Lost Chapters. There's so much a huge backlog of Lost Chapters. But of course, now you can jump in and listen to our extra War Machine thoughts. Like, I think you should throw your striker picture in Discord so people can see that. 
And yeah. stay tuned. We're working our D6G magic to bring some special guests here. And uh, like we talked about, like we intimated. So yeah. we'll keep, we'll keep get working some that. Soon. We're looking forward to, we're really, we're, if it's not obvious, we are very excited about Mark four, which I don't, I thought we'd play a game or two and be like, that was neat. Uh, it's, right. it's got something going on, right? There's a special sauce happening. I'm not sure what it is. It's the chaos. <laughs> it's the chaos. It is the chaos. You know, as little finger said, chaos is a ladder. And here we are. And <laughs> Privateer Press is climbing right up. <laughs> right. All right, Rafe. Well, thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you, Rafe, for another great two pipped pip. And uh, we'll chat with you all again real soon on the D6 Generation. See you later. Achievement unlocked. You've made it to the end of another D6 Generation episode, the podcast whose humor has universally been acclaimed as not too horrible. Please let us know what you thought of the show by emailing us at info at the D6 generationcom If for some inexplicable reason you actually enjoyed this show, you can help others find out about it by leaving positive reviews on iTunes. Thanks for listening and happy gaming.